Why are superhero names pronounced the way they are? Some are stressed on the first part, like Wonder Woman, and some on the second part, like Invisible Woman. Why is it Ghost Rider but Silver Surfer? Why not Ghost Rider and Silver Surfer? And why are people not entirely sure how to pronounce him and her? Investigating this can tell us quite a bit about how we refer to people and things in English with the correct stress. So, the classic superhero name is made up of two words. About 70% of IGN's top 100 comic book heroes are the two-word type, and those are the ones I'm going to look at here. Now, to understand how to pronounce these with the correct stress, the big question you have to ask is, what kind of word is the first word? Is it a thing? No, not that kind of thing. I mean a thing as in a noun. Or is it a quality, an adjective? If it's a noun, the stress is on the first word, like in bathroom, dog food, cell phone, geography professor. If it's an adjective, it's stressed on the second word, like small room, great food, mobile phone, nutty professor. OK, let's try superheroes. Bat, that's a noun, so it's Batman. Invisible, adjective, invisible woman. Swamp, another noun, swamp thing. Black, adjective, black panther. Wonder, a look of wonder, noun, wonder woman. Human, can be used as a noun, but it's basically an adjective, human being human rights, so human torch. Ghost, noun, ghost rider. Savage, adjective, savage dragon. Now, the first group are called compounds, and the second group are noun phrases. The difference isn't just stress, it's also in the meaning. Noun phrases are more literal, while compounds are more suggestive. An invisible woman is literally invisible, but Batman isn't literally Bat. His association with bats is more suggestive, evocative. Ghost Rider has ghostly associations, but as far as I'm aware, he isn't literally a ghost. Black Panther, on the other hand, is named after a panther that's black. There are a lot more superheroes with colours. Green Lantern, Scarlet Witch, Green Arrow. Red Tornado, and so on. And there are many more compounds. Spider-Man, Catwoman, Star-Lord, Aquaman, or Aquaman in America. Aqua, of course, means water in Latin. Hellboy, Hawkman, Hawkeye, Nightwing, Nightcrawler, Ant-Man, Moon Knight, Doctor... Hmm... Doctor is a noun, but it's a special kind of noun, an honorific. That's a formal title or job description. And when we put an honorific before a name, it's the name that's accentuated. I have a PhD, so I could formally be called Dr. Lindsay. And among superheroes, we have Dr. Strange, Dr. Manhattan, Captain America, Captain Marvel, Mr. Fantastic, Professor X, Judge Dredd, Detective Chimp, etc. We also get second word stress with full names. So Nick Fury, Luke Cage, Rocket Raccoon. Rocket's a regular noun, but people call him Rocket, so for him it's a name, like Rocky Raccoon in the Beatles song that he's named after. Rocky Raccoon. For someone else, Rocket could be just a common noun and get the stress. I'm a rocket man. This one's a bit unusual, because it's a pun, a play on words. As a full name, it's Harley Quinn, but the name is deliberately like the single word Harlequin, which is stressed at the beginning. And some people do stress it this way. The Joker and Harley Quinn and Harley Quinn and Harley Quinn. Batgirl, Huntress, Harley Quinn, Harley Quinn, Harley Quinn. 
but the full name version is way more common. Harley Quinn, nice to meet ya. Harley Quinn. Harley freaking Quinn! A long established British comic strip character works in the same way. His name deliberately resembles the word handicap, like Harley Quinn, but as a full name, it would be Andy Cap, like Harley Quinn. Now, there are some cases where the first word is a noun, but it acts more like an adjective. Think of spring break, child prodigy, gold earrings. The meaning here is more literal than suggestive. The earrings are literally gold. The prodigy is the child, and the break, an event, is part of spring. And sure enough, we have a few superheroes of this type. So just like spring break, we have winter soldier. And like gold earrings, we have silver surfer. Gold and silver often refer to the colours of the two metals. Some other examples are torn between treating the first word more like an adjective or more like a typical noun. In fact, English dialects can differ on this. Here in the UK, we treat Boy Scout like Child Prodigy. But Americans treat it as a regular compound, Boy Scout like Batman. When I was a boy, we said ice cream like gold earrings, but it's gradually moved to the American compound form, ice cream. And you can even find this variability in a single speaker. Is this superhero named after a fist that has the literal quality of iron, like Black Panther is named after a panther that's black? If so, we get Iron Fist. Iron Fist. Iron Fist. Iron Fist. Or is it just a suggestive noun in a compound? Iron Fist. Now, there are some cases where the standard compound version wins out completely. We don't say orange juice, and for the superhero, we don't say Iron Man. It's just orange juice and Iron Man. Now, conversely, we can get adjectives that end up on the noun side. They can find themselves in a compound where their meaning stops being literal. A greenhouse is literally green, but the compound greenhouse is only suggestive of greenery. The Invisible Woman is really invisible, but Dark Man isn't just a dark man. And Deadpool not only isn't a dead pool, he isn't even named after a pool that's literally dead. So they're Dark Man and Deadpool. As I said at the beginning, pronouncing two words superheroes with the correct stress depends on the first word. And as we've seen, most of them are either nouns or adjectives. There aren't many examples of other possibilities. You can have a pronoun like she, or maybe a verb like watch, and these go with the classic compounds. She-Hulk, Watchmen. Also Daredevil, though that word was around long before superheroes. But there's one hero I haven't mentioned yet, and you may have been wondering why especially as he's pretty much the daddy of them all. Super can be used as a rather old-fashioned adjective, meaning excellent. How super? But Superman isn't just an excellent man. He's above other men, faster than a speeding bullet, etc. Used like this, meaning over and above, super is a prefix. Its counterpart is sub, meaning under. And stress patterns with these prefixes are actually variable. We have supervisor, but superintendent. Subcontractor, but subcontinent. There are even words that are pronounced both ways. Some say supernova. Some say supernova. And yes, many say superhero, but many others say superhero. And likewise, we have on the one hand submariner, and on the other, of course, Superman. So admittedly, Superman may have set the pattern for putting the stress on the first word when the second word is man, which seems pretty much exceptionless. But his own name isn't actually as typical as you might have thought. 
If you enjoyed this video, please like it, share it, and why not subscribe? If you have any questions about pronunciation, let me know in the comments section below. And until next time, take care.